Hey everyone, it's Ollie, and welcome to the long overdue next episode of Intermediate Java Game Development Series. And I just wanted to say quickly that uh, the Java Hub has reached 500 subscribers, and doesn't seem much in YouTube terms, but it's quite a lot to me. And I thank all my current subscribers and future people who may or may not subscribe, just if you're watching this video. Thank you for supporting me and my cause, and... Um, yeah, just enjoy these resources, go to the forums, uh, you can get help and whatever. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, thank you guys. Uh, so we're going to get started again from where we left off. Now, I haven't admittedly looked at this code in a while because I've been snowed under with schoolwork and I'll spare you my excuses, but I, if anything's changed previously from the if anything's changed from the code previously then just tell me I'm gonna delete this stuff actually because I was just testing it out and I'll show you how to do it in a second um, yeah if anything's changed tell me and I'll put the code on the forum so you can just copy and paste it pretty easy um, first off I've made a player class but it's empty but you can go ahead pause the video and import stuff, these things here, graphics, image, rectangle, and image icon. And in the world class, we're just going to make another change. And one last thing before I start is that people had problems with the navigate map thing um, whilst moving them with the arrow keys. And I realise this, but uh, the arrow key movement of the map was only to demonstrate that the map could move. It wasn't really, because you wouldn't move the map. Um, in in this case, we we're not going to move the map with the arrow keys in the game uh, because we'll own, we'll call the move map method or the navigate map method when our player goes below a certain distance or whatever. We can scroll the map up or scroll it sideways, whatever. So yeah, we need to do one thing in the world class and make we need to make a new array so we can make a new public array. I change the blocks to public, and you'll see why. Uh, in a bit, also the array number here. Uh, we can make a public boolean array called is solid. Not is sold, is solid. Um, and then in the world thing down here, we can just initialize this um, is solid equals new boolean array. And the, damn it, the array number. And that's the is solid array, in case you're wondering, is that obviously all blocks all blocks are going to be surrounded by this rectangle, this bounding rectangle, so we can detect intersections and collision detections, but say for the sky, we don't want our player to collide with the sky because that would just be silly. So we need the is solid boolean, and we can come into load arrays, and it's, it's as simple as saying is solid... I and this is I'm in the sky bit here, so is false. The sky blocks are not solid, and we can just copy and paste this. And it's basically the sky is the only thing that's not solid. Um, true. So I'm setting the dirt, the dirt top, and the stone to true. So these blocks are solid, and we use this boolean array in our player class in a bit. So. Um, yeah, that's that's that done. So in our player method now, we can create some variables. So first off, we can create a private world variable called world, because we're going to need this to access the um, uh, arrays in it. And in our constructor, public player, we can take world object as a parameter, and we will we will be passing in the world object in our game panel here later on. And I'm just going to create an instance of player p1. And then here I can say p1 equals new player and just pass world into it. There we go, that's all nicely set up. Now that we've done this, we can set the world this dot world equals world. And let's see, we need some more stuff. Private rectangle player rectangle and a private image um, player image IMG and then 
I'm going to go into here because I don't want to copy out the whole of the path to the player. Now I've been lazy. My player picture is just a static image. It's not animated or anything. So it's just a kind of guy will be sliding along the floor. So player actually paste this in and it's player dot gif and this is going to be player img um, yeah and now we can initialize our rectangle actually we'll make some integers first we can make some protected integers uh, protected is the same as private um, except that well no it's that's a bad way to put it it's not the same as private it's similar to private except in pri private variables can only be accessed by the same class but public uh, protected variables, sorry, can be accessed by only the same package. So it's a little more lenient than the private variable, but it's yeah okay. So int and we have an x and a y. Actually, we don't need the x and the y. X direction, y direction. That's all we need. You'll see why soon. And we can initialize this player rectangle by calling it a new rectangle. And uh, let's see, um, 50x, 0y, because we'll have our player sort of drop in from the top of the screen. And then we need what the dimensions of this 10 by six, 10 by 36. So you you guys will need to change that depending on your player, the size of your player animation or image. But that's my one, so I've done that. And we can now create a few methods. We will create the obvious ones first. Private void set x direction, direction int d, and x direction equals d. We can copy and paste this real quick. Set y direction, and change that to y. There we go. And now we need one. We need two main methods. One called update, and you'll see what that does in a second. And one called draw, and we will do the draw one now since it's simple. Graphics G and G dot draw image player image player rectangle dot x because we're going to draw it where the rectangle is so we can accurately detect our collisions. Uh, so yeah, that's done. That draw method is done. Now in our update method we need two things. We need move and check for collision. And we can program these both now. They can be both be private. Private void move and private void check for collision and in our move method we're going to do three things we're going to update the x and the y so we'll do that now player rectangle dot x oh my c key is sticky and it doesn't want to press e um, plus equals the x direction player rectangle dot y plus equals the y direction there we go. Uh, so we update the x and y, and then we want to do. Then we want some kind of gravity to drop our player down, and we can make a separate method. Gravity. All right. So now let's make our gravity method. And this will simply it will take the world. Actually, I'll show you. Oh, first, let's do this. We need to loop through every. Um, rectangle and is solid variable in the world class um, and then we can check if it's colliding with it so i is less than world dot array num because if we look here the array number is 500 and we've all set the arrays to the array number so it's looping through all of those basically and then i plus plus and inside our for loop uh, we want our player to fall as long as it, there's not a solid block underneath it, or it's collided with a solid block. So if mm, the block, if world dot is solid, 
I so if it's not if the block isn't solid where the player is set x direction to uh, 1 that will move it downwards and then oh wait sorry the y direction set the y direction to 1 and then we need to set it to 0 once it's collided so else if uh, the world dot is solid if the block does become solid and just double check it's intersecting with a rectangle as well world dot blocks i actually wait we'll put brackets around that like this and we say player rectangle dot inter inter intersects there we go all right so if the just to go over this again quickly we we have a method called gravity and it's going to make our player drop if it's not touching any blocks so we're just simply looping through the 500 tiles that are on our screen um, if the block isn't solid set the y direction to 1 in other words move it downwards else if the world if it does become solid and just check we're intersecting with the block as well set the y direction to 0 and that should work quite nicely um, what's the time what are we on all right, we're past 10 minutes now, so we'll do the check for collision um, in the later, or in the next tutorial, sorry. And check for collision will check for like sideways collisions, not just gravity, and also up upwards collisions as well. So I'm just going to show you this working now. Um, if we come into this game panel, um, we've given our, we've made a new player object. We've given it the world object to work with we just need to update it um, game.update p1.update call that simple as and in our draw method p1.draw pass in g alright let's run this now hopefully no errors alright so here we go here's our player and actually missed it because I wasn't quick enough if I set this if I set x here or y here to minus 50 and run it I'll be able to drag it into the screen recorder in time damn it still wasn't enough time alright 150 then and I can't be bothered to drag my screen recorder because it's a bit dodgy here we go there we go you saw it the guy dropped in from the top of the screen and that's kinda of gravity working um, yeah, so that's it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, one quick thing was that someone sent me a message about a glitch with the sleeping uh, method, the sleeping stuff that we did previous tutorials ago, and just literally just after filming it, I realized it, and I still uploaded the video anyway because it didn't turn out to be a major problem for me because it only occurred a couple of times, and um, what the glitch was is where the sleep time becomes negative and then it doesn't reset and it keeps getting more and more negative so I forget who sent me the message but if this happens to you send me like the details on the forums and I'll try and make a solution or um, lost my train of thought uh, yeah so if you post me the problem post what post what's happening or if you're confident in Java, you can think of a solution, send it to me. Uh, but yeah, that would be good if we could get that sorted out as soon as possible. And if... Um, I know that I haven't released a tutorial in a long time. I plan to get one, at least one out every week now. I need to be more loyal to you guys since I've got a lot of you now who have subscribed and expect your tutorials. So feel free to follow me on Twitter, link in description, everything in the description, just look, make sure read it, read the description, and do stuff it says. Um, follow me on Twitter and bug me to make the next tutorial, because I might end up not doing it, and I mean I will do it, but yeah, anyways. Alright, so thanks for watching guys, please subscribe, visit the forums, ask questions, etc. There's loads of people on the forums now, so you'll be sure to get an answer soon enough. Uh, that's pretty much it. So.